I want everybody to understand the mission of Brother Sanchez. My mission at this time, family, is to bring you closer to the creator by understanding the creation. Understand that the only way I would be able to do that is first of all for you to realize that your understanding of the creation is based on a foundation of lies that was given to us by our government. Now what I've come to find on my journey is that once you start to delve into ancient cosmology, you develop a warm spot in your chest. You develop a deeper love than that which you thought you had, okay? You develop a oneness with your surrounding. You develop a, a more close a relationship to the creator now many of you who understand the significance of ancient cosmology by now know that this is very true i get a lot of messages and i get a lot of comments in this section of people telling me how much this knowledge is changing their lives and i want to let you guys know that that is few that keep brother sanchez going because this stuff is changing my life too i always told y'all on this channel that we all are growing together because i never want to come off as a mr know-it-all or anyone with any type of ego i feel that i have been blessed with some knowledge at this time and the knowledge that i've been blessed with has helped me become a better man and has helped me become a better spiritual being i know that ever since a child that the most high blessed me with certain gifts to be able to illustrate my thoughts as a young child, I wrote children's books. I actually was in what's called the Young Authors Conference, and I wrote a book called How Stars Came Along. Then I take none of this credit, people. I always tell people that the credit go to the Most High and to the ancestors. I never take that credit because I was just like these people. All I'm doing is sharing information, and I do want to say that this is not my information, people. I'm just sharing with you the information of the ancestors, and I try my best to make it plain and simple so that I don't add and take away from the message and a picture is definitely worth a thousand words okay now I'm gonna hop right into what I have for you guys today today we're just gonna look at a clip by Neil deGrasse Tyson and I'm also gonna point out something else to you about GPS but I'm gonna do it in parts because I want this video to be just about Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's like NASA's spokesman okay he's like the Pope for NASA all right so this is where a lot of people get their current understanding of our cosmology from at this time especially if you're a younger person so most people who don't understand when they regurgitating theories that's been given to us by our government that these theories aren't consistent and they're more so for conversation and for ego purposes all right the only thing that we should be focused on in the scientific community of the world is facts okay so understand this that this video you about to see is from a guy who we pay millions in tax money to and has college degrees okay he's one of the highest paid scientists at this time so i've been talking a little bit too much and i do want y'all to forgive me i'm gonna play this clip right now check this out dr neil degrasse tyson no i mean earth to the astrophysicist we don't really care much about sea level no if you want to be high, you're measuring your distance from the center of the Earth. From the very center of the Earth. Is that different from the center? <laughs> I, I'm trying okay, to give it. Okay, the I'm very center of answer. the Earth. I'm, I don't know how many centers you know of. In <laughs> I must plug this in right here because something may have just went over most of y'all heads. Now, when he made the gesture and both of those brothers went to joking and the crowd started laughing, what the people in the audience didn't realize that at this time, the joke was really on them. You see, when he said the center of the earth, Neil deGrasse Tyson and the uh, host of the show, they both understood the fact that there is no center of the earth on a globe. Now, show me where the center of the earth would be on a globe. Globe. You can't find a specific center of a globe, okay, people? It's impossible. So everybody in the crowd really don't understand what those guys are laughing at. The joke is really on them. Those two guys are laughing at the audience. There is no center of the earth on a globe. So understand that the only way you can have a center of the earth that these two guys are talking about is when you refer to the ancient cosmology that I've been showing you guys video out the video, okay? When you look at 
the ancient cosmology, the earth is a circle and not a globe. And and it's very, very easy to pinpoint what a center would be in the center of a circle, just like a CD disc in the center of that is a circle. But on a globe, you can't find a center, people. So the joke is on everybody in the audience. I'm going to keep the video moving so y'all can see how ridiculous this is. Okay, the very center of the earth. Mm. The really very, very center yes. of the earth. Yeah. Uh, so you want to find the farthest point from that center. And it turns out sea level at the equator is farther away from the center of the earth than sea level near the poles. And it has nothing to do with global warming and melting of the ice caps. Why is that? Because earth, we know it spins once a uh, Day. Yes, thank you. Three people know the, how long a day last year. Good for row number two. They're <laughs> off to a great start. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you spin. You know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. So, so you spin. You know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. So, so you spin. You know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. So, so you spin. You know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. gets wider in the middle and so earth throughout its life even when it formed it was spinning and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the pole so it's not actually a sphere so it's not actually a sphere so it's not actually a sphere So it's not actually a sphere, it's, an, it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid, that's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So, it turns out the pear-shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. Earth has been misrepresented to us by geologists because the globes that you buy that you rub your fingers over it, and you feel the Himalayas, and you feel the Rocky Mountains. No, <laughs> no, okay? These mountains are puny compared to the size of the Earth. You would not know they were there. If you were truly that size, some big cosmic giant lumbering through space, coming upon the Earth, rubbing your hand on it, the <laughs> depth of the, of the, of the, of the, of your, what do you call these things? The, um, the cuti- your, your uh, finger... The, the finger, finger print prints mark, mark. The depth of that would be greater than the entire range of distance from the Marianas Trench in the bottom of the Pacific to the top of Mount Everest. Therefore, you would close your eyes, rub your finger, you would not know whether you are an ocean, valley, mountain, or hill. Well, you might be wet or dry. You might be, you know, well, you by might... how much wet? A little. How? No. Yes. You, you wouldn't even notice it. You're not going to say, oh, i got to dry my hand. The depth yeah. of the ocean doesn't measure up to the depth of your fingerprint. Oh. That's my point. Oh. So, so we've been fed this misrepresentation of our own planet on the belief that, in fact, we have real surface features. Now, I don't even know where to begin into dissecting all of this baloney that we just heard. Anybody that's telling you that this flat earth knowledge at this time is separating humanity, that's a lie, people, because humanity has been separated for the past few centuries. And ain't no way that knowledge can separate. The only thing knowledge can do is empower you any knowledge. Now, the only thing that has separated humanity for the past few centuries was the lies, the lack of knowledge. Okay. It was the lies. 
what keeps us separated today is the lack of knowledge. There is no knowledge that can separate a people. Knowledge can only unite a people and empower a people. Knowledge is power, people. Now, the government want to plant seeds out there saying that this knowledge can somehow separate the people because they know that this is the knowledge that's going to unite the people at this time, just as it united the ancestors. So understand that this knowledge is not a negative thing. It's a good thing at this time, people. It has been the lies that has separated humanity for the past few centuries. Now, this is the truth that can now unite us. But we got to take the medication, people. OK, understand that we want healing, but all medicine don't taste good. And the truth hurt, but it will set you free. Now, let me get back to Neil deGrasse Tyson with all of this baloney. First of all, let's understand that we all admit that the Apollo missions were fake and that Apollo 13 was the last movie Hollywood actually made up until the recent one they just did and they didn't even show any moon footage for real on a new one this is important because you gotta understand apollo 13 was a bestseller it sold okay understand that all moon mission movies are top sellers that leaves a question we know that hollywood is money motivated and we know that they remake more movies than anybody they remake everything okay we got about 10 star wars all right that's been remade so why don't we have more than five moon movies? Because they stopped making the moon movies after Apollo 13 because they knew that the masses would catch on to the fact that Hollywood and NASA work together. They knew that we would catch on to the fact of how easy it is for them to fake a moon mission with the same technology they use with all of these pretty movies and stuff we go and see. So people, if y'all don't think we being deceived, this rabbit hole go real deep. So we admit this, but we still believe the other stuff that they say like the ISS you know the International Space Station I'm starting to doubt everything people I don't even think satellites are real okay and you will understand why I say this in the next part of the video when I get into GPS and everything if you want to know why I say satellites aren't real that's going to be another part that I'm going to do on GPS okay so stay tuned for that like I said I'm starting to doubt everything they say people we got to re-question it all now okay because because check this out. If they lied about the Apollo program, they'll lie about anything they can get away with. And that's exactly what they've been doing since they were created, people. NASA was designed in 1958 to militarize space. Let me say that again because many of you just don't know that. I said that NASA was designed in 1958 to militarize space. Now, what does that mean? Okay, that means that in a nutshell, they wanted to keep the private and civilian and corporations from having access. In other words, if they didn't hurry up and get up there and militarize space and, and launch a space program, civilians and corporate agencies would have started doing it. We know they don't want civilians and corporations having the, the luxury of being able to launch rockets anytime and have their own programs like them. But it gets even deep. Keep all of this in mind as we go on because I'm going to show y'all just who NASA really is. Now, that's the only reason NASA was designed Keep that in mind and understand that if we had the technology to do all of this stuff like go to the moon and go to Mars like they telling you, then why are we faking it, people? Everybody know NASA is faking it. It's been proven that all the images we receiving is GoPro and illustrations. The man, you just heard the interview from one of these scientists giving you all of this baloney. He telling you it looked one way, but they showing us a globe in our face every day. So why are they faking this? This moon mission stuff is important because when they came back from the moon missions, that's when they so-called confirmed that the Earth was a globe with those bogus images that I told y'all about in the previous videos. See, they substantiated those fake images with the moon missions, but they didn't really go to no moon, people. And I got another video where NASA admits this, okay? They admitted that they didn't go. So if they didn't go to the moon, what are these pictures we looking at of Earth? So this proved we don't have a clear picture of what the planet really looked like, or they do and don't want to show you. 
All right. So that's something you got to deal with. All right. We understand. And it's a fact that they faking all of this stuff. If they really could do it, why would they fake it, people? That's a question you got to ask yourself now. You want to answer for that? It's not that they wanted to fake the moon landings. OK, it's that they had to fake these landings, people. It ain't that they wanted to. It's that they had to, brothers and sisters, because if they didn't fake these moon landings and go up there and militarize space, they would have left the door open for private corporations and civilian companies, you know, to get part in the space program. And you got to understand that the space program is one of their most expensive ones. They don't want nobody else part of this, let alone everybody knowing the true nature of the cosmos, because that's what they rule us with. And if you don't understand how that's done, start the series from the beginning. I got tons of videos on this stuff. So understand that they wouldn't fake it if they can really do it. All right. And they had to militarize space space to cut everybody else out of it all right and to make it private all right so they had to give us these fake pictures people of a globe people they couldn't afford to rewrite the science books and undo their lucrative lies you really think they have that much integrity people now they can simulate a fake satellite program and maintain that it's viable by using all that tax money for the space program to create illusions instead of telling the truth. Okay, so all of these billions of dollars is going on equipment to deceive you. And with that kind of money, people, you understand that they have deceived most of the planet. So check this out. How the heck could a satellite program be possible anyway based on their micrometeor theories? Think about it, people. All right, something in the number of, I'm just guessing here, a couple of thousand micrometers per second is moving through space at any given direction and they're moving 10 times the speed of a rifle bullet all right these satellites wouldn't stand a chance up there floating around you think it'll just be lovely people understand that we have been lied to by compulsive liars okay so satellites are questionable so the micrometeor theory make the satellite program questionable all right and we'll get deep into that later i'm gonna talk about loran and gps because most of our communications on the planet are land-based. Yep, you heard it. Land-based, people. Most of your cell phone technology is for towers. At the end of this video, check out the links in the description because they're very informative, all right? The first satellite picture you ever saw in space was an artist's conception. The first picture of a satellite in space was not a real image. It was an artist's conception, okay? Meaning an illustration. 